Hello, my name is Johnny. Welcome to another awesome collection video, Classic Toys, Toys of the 1970s. Today, I'm going to share a Hasbro catalog from 1974. Features their entire, ty entire toy line, and uh, specifically G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe Adventure Team. If you'd like, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like, reply, and share. I've just got this open for a sample. We're going to look closely at it. Uh, this is the catalog. Hasbro 1974. There's the table of contents. You see how much they concentrated on G.I. Joe? Uh, we've got the other toys. If there's time at the end of this video, I'll, I'll briefly show the other items. Let's get right to G.I. Joe. G.I. <clears throat> Joe started in 1964, and the military line went to 1968, 1969, they had the Adventures of, and 1970, they started with the Flock Tear G.I. Joe Adventure Team. Uh, here we go, and uh, this is 74, so this is the first year of the Kung Fu Grip. Look at that, wonderful. Kung Fu Grip, flexible hands that make G.I. Joe more lifelike than ever before. They enable Joe to actually clutch, grasp, and grip weapons. Tools hang from the branches and cliffs as well as overpowers adversaries with his bare hands. The Kung Fu Group, adding unlimited possibilities to a child's world of play and to the future of G.I. Joe. The Kung Fu Grip, just another reason why G.I. Joe outranks the competition. All righty then. Oh, look what we got. We've got the, the standard figures. Got the land adventure, the sea adventure, the air adventure, the black adventure, and the man of action. Man of action was based on the soldier, so that's why he, he doesn't have the, a, a beard. The same thing with the, what they call the black adventure, no beard. You see the three colors on the, those. And then look at this, we've got the, the talkers, we've got the talking commander. Talking Black Commander and Talking Man of Action. And he, he see, he still has the soldier's dog tag because he says uh, what the talking soldier from 1967 said, those commands. These two figures say the Adventure Team figures and exactly the same thing, except uh, <clears throat> the two variations there. Their cool uh, uniforms were based on the Green Beret outfit that they came out with for G.I. Joe back in 66. And uh, talkers are always more expensive and rare, especially uh, the black commander. You can see them there. Very cool. You can see their new Kung Fu grip. And then all the different adventures. These are the uniform outfits. There were 12 of them. Got these all carded. And then they came out with another color. First they came out in a mini box, then they came out with a card, and then towards the end they came out on the color-coordinated orange background, rainbow G.I. Joe label uh, set. There they are. There you can see the names of them all. Photo Recon that they're listing here. Uh, that replaced Winter... Survival, I believe it was called, the white uh, uniform. So that one's a rarer one to get. And then this one only came out in the second, uh, and the, the carded ones didn't come out in the box. So you only get a couple pieces of equipment and a uniform. And then these were bigger sets. These were the blue sets on blue cards, bigger, the hurricane spotter, so forth. Infiltration, that was a cool one. That was uh, one of the yellow sets with the black. Aerial Recon might have been my favorite on uh, this assortment. And then this one's great, too. Well, these two are great. Sur Jungle Survival and then the Secret Agent. He comes with that mask and then he comes with the uh, 
attache case with the collapsible uh, shoulder weapon. There's the stock for it and a little communications. Uh, so these were the the medium carded sets. Here's all the the big blue box action sets, action packs. The rescue raft, firefighter, life life catapult, wind boat, underwater explorer. Escape car, flying rescue, signal flasher, drag bite, turbo copter. Can't even say which one's my favorite. They're all, all pretty cool. There's a picture of them with, with them all. So that was a big collection to get. <clears throat> I have most of those knit in a the box. They're a little bit harder to find. And then usually these blue boxes might have some scuffing on them because the, the paint did that. Uh, this one was great. The rescue raft. Flying Rescue, the escape car, and that was really cool, the drag bike, and then you've got Turbocopter for flying underwater. They're all, all cool. Uh, like the photography of everything. Let's move along. There's the, the smaller little equipment sets. There you can see all the titles of them. They first came out with the first six. And then when they came out with the next six, see how they changed the card shape? You can find those. Uh, mint on card, not too hard, and they don't cost that much. And it, sometimes that's preferable, even if... Uh, it, nowadays, I wouldn't do that, but if you had enough of them, you could get, you know, mint items like this one, where it has the little sample analyzer and stuff to get everything mint and set it up. I actually open the card, but I, I don't recommend that, because they're so old now that uh, try to just get loose uh, this would be cool I'd love to be able to get these uh, store uh, display cases that they, they came in they'd be worth a pretty penny if you could find those today I don't know of a collector that has those I'm a pretty advanced collector and I've never seen them come up or somebody show that they have them here's the classics spy island Danger of the Depths, Eight Ropes of Danger, Fantastic Free Fall, and then these two biggies, the Pygmy Gorilla set and the Tiger Hunt. And once I had a chance to get a case box of the Tiger Hunt a very long time ago, and I just couldn't swing it. I would have loved it. They were mint in the, mint in the box, all four of them except that uh, some of the cellophane was torn and they weren't perfect, perfect, but uh, that would have been a, a sweet buy back in the day. Very cool. Lots of play value with all of these, with the animals, the gorilla, the tiger, the octopus. And who, who doesn't love the spy island? Uh, this was new for this year, the Devil of the Deep. Look at it, classic. Hammerhead Manta Ray. I'm sure they exist. If they was G.I. Joe showed it, it had to be true. And this, the Stolen Idol. They had that as a kid with the, those accessories. I didn't even know they sold that helicopter without it. You only get these accessories with this, so why they bothered to <clears throat> do two, two different boxes for that, I don't know. I mean, that wasn't a lot of stuff that they needed to do that separate. I mean, what kid would say, I just get me the helicopter. I don't want the same helicopter with that. Everybody, every kid would want that. Uh, there's the lifelike hair and beard, but they're not showing it. But they had switched over, and in this space, they put the Kung Fu grip symbol that we saw earlier. So they should have shown that in this, but maybe they didn't have that ready for the artwork when they made this thing. So that's the classic Mummy's Tomb set, where you actually get the figure with it. And then this was the last year of the Shark Surprise. You actually get the figure with it. And that's how they came. Four pieces in there. That would be a super fine if they could ever find case boxes for that. And here's where we started. Uh, the headquarters box. And the training center. And they also did a training center where instead of the art going this way, the box was turned this way. And it was different. It came with a signal light from Sears. Very cool indeed. And 
They're new. They came out with their own version of the Jeep again, packaged it with a lot of stuff, brought back the Mouth of Doom's Crocodile. So that's the first time they got the Crocodile for uh, adventure teams. That's called Sandstorm Survival. They also had a different version of this by J.C. Penney's, where you got most of this stuff, and I don't think they gave you the Crocodile, and it had a different name. And then there's the mobile support vehicle. Great, great, great unit. Those would be cool boxes. Look at how heavy it gets with the f four of them in the store case when the, the retailer would go to order them. And that was new, the, the Fate of the Troubleshooter with the talking thing. And that's the first of three Vulture sets. They always showed it with the yellow. He was came all black. They didn't put the, bother to put the yellow paint on it when they made it. Uh, very cool. Most of these are very hard to get to work. They don't they have something, a mechanism where they don't want to work anymore. They were battery operated. So if you can get a troubleshooter that actually works, you've, you've found something. So is that the last page on there? All righty. Very cool. Let me flip back to show very briefly some of the other items that they were selling. Yeah, so basically Hasbro, uh, I mean, a huge chunk of what they were selling was uh, G.I. Joe. They had bought a game company, so they had some games. I was a fan of Jerry Lewis, but I don't re remember him doing something for games. I remember Don Adams doing something for games. Mr. Potato Head, that's been a good seller for them since the, the 1950s. I think they still make that today. Of course, Light Bright's a big seller. And then the Snow Cone, they had cool commercials for all that. But I mean, as a total toy line, G.I. Joe was their, uh, their, their biggest uh, toys for this time period. The gumball machines. So they had some licensing here. We got Star Trek Batman for craft sets. And then dolls, the I did the romper room. Alrighty. That's a look at the Hasbro catalog 1974. Until next time, thank you for watching.